Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at an info stealer that is impersonating uh, AI users. Again, this has unfortunately become a bit of a trend, although this one isn't for some so-called uh, hacktivism, uh, nor is it as sophisticated as what our uh, old friend pulled off. Uh, this is a simpler campaign using the classical, reliable uh, PDF, dot, or in this case jpeg.exe, uh, they're calling it Noodle File, and it basically, it claims to be an AI video generator. Of course, those exist. There's Sora and Hilu. Uh, there's plenty of others. Uh, and there is actually a real version of Dream Machine, and I think this is it. But I wouldn't trust that 100%, because I went, I, I go and search, and Owen, oh, uh, we've immediately, <laughs> Copilot has found the malware, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, so... Will the real Luma Labs please stand up, which is a hilarious name. I just think of Luma Stealer. Uh, so which which Luma is the real one? Is it this one? Uh, is it Luma-DreamAI.com? I don't think so. Uh, this one, I think, is probably just a competitor that's bidding on brand. Yeah, because this looks like it probably is a real, uh, real one. Uh, Clearly, there is a substantial amount of malicious impersonators. So, the other way they're getting distributed is they're buying Facebook ads, like this one, claiming to be Luma Dream Machine, no expertise needed, let AI do the magic. Turn your photos into 3D models in seconds with Luma AI. Have you ever wanted to create stunning 3D models from simple photos or videos? I was hoping this was going to be Luma Stealer AI, but okay. Uh, you upload your images, videos, so it's basically OpenAI Sora. All right. And this one is, and I don't know if this one's still on, but we can try it. AIDreamMachine.com. No, that's gone. If it's in a bleeping computer article, it should be down, because I think enough people read that. Uh, but uh, there's a very similar one. Luma-DreamAI.com. Uh, I've already tried this, uh, but I will just show you what the prompting process looks like. Now, the second stage does actually have a defender. Oh, it might be dead, so we might have to find a different one. So this is the first step. So we go here, and we can type in. We go start free now, and we can choose what type of thing we want. Uh, and then we can choose what we want. So we give it a quick uh, description. I don't know. We'll go with that. Of course, there's not actually going to be an AI video, so... I, I could have put anything I wanted in there. It's not going to generate a video. Now, there is one obvious uh, red flag here. It says my file is ready, but it isn't. And we've got the logo, which is, I believe, the real logo. Oh, oh! if you click it, it just instantly skips that. And it redirects us to luma-ai.xyz. Uh, now, let's see if there's anything at this site. Ooh. Oh. This is how you don't... Uh, this is how you don't uh, do web design, by the way. Okay, there's the there's the login for it. Oh, there's a... Can we just... <laughs> uh, this is a bit of a fail. Uh, not the most professional malware campaign I've ever seen. Then we got uploads. Uh, let's go through and see what's available here. Oh, and that's uh, the thing that should have worked, but somehow broke, because they must have typed the name wrong. And then we got files. Uh, which has this, new file agent video, new file gen. We've got the error log. Okay, they did at least have permissions on that. There's no way. Okay, good. There is there is some authentication. I thought for a second, okay, these guys aren't that stupid. Actually, they probably are. Uh, we also have this uh, files.zip. Uh, so, in fact, they, they absolutely are that stupid. Uh... Oh my goodness. <laughs> How does this even happen? I'm not going to I'm not going to show anything sensitive on here. Oh. Okay, I, I can't actually show that. Uh oh my god. <laughs> okay, these people <laughs> I I don't even know what to say. This is like the worst fail I've ever seen in malware. I don't know if you remember the Chrome uh like not the recent Chrome extension video, but like the one I did a few months ago. Uh, th there was an they uh failed to authenticate their endpoint, but <sighs> this is no doubt the most epic fail I have ever seen in malware. Because it is illegal and unethical, I won't do it, but yeah, anyone uh who wanted like they this is 
This is horrific levels. I mean, I, I don't even want to think about how they screwed up their security that bad, but let's actually look at the malware. Got an index.html. Wait, where's my, where's my malware, though? Oh, this isn't the malware. This is actually the fake... This is the source code. Okay. And here is the actual payload that we were curious about. And we're going to run it on a sandbox. I'm going to do some other things with it. Uh, so we got... So we have a fake cap cut. And we've got... Uh, whatever this is. Now let's just do a quick run on virus total. This one is fully undetected. Also is being found to be cleaned by the sandbox. So then the actual payload is probably the fake capcut.exe uh, with a Microsoft Edge logo. Yeah, that definitely looks like malware to me, but let's double check. Just do a little bit of a dynamic analysis. Oh, that's, that's our micro client. This one. Okay, we go here. I don't really use MITM proxy anymore. That's why I don't usually do it in the videos. Uh, because uh, most info stealers uh, figured out that trick and now encrypt using a proprietary algorithm. So you'd have to do some real uh, reverse engineering if you wanted to get anything out of it. And ultimately, what you see exchanged over those protocols usually isn't that interesting. But that is a trick that's become more popular, especially with people using sandboxes is they've learned that they should make sure that the most obvious file isn't the payload. Oop. Oh, it even opened. That's kind of cool. It may have detected uh, something is up, though. This is an edge web view, so this is this kind of uh, a system. I mean, a few of these. Let's see if it DNSed anything that 404 would, because if, if the C2 is dead, that's usually what happened, and I don't see that happening. Okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this on my own VM. Now we're just one second away from... Oh, of course, because Chrome is actually pretty small. And Firefox is still updating. Well, it's probably just easier to try... Oh, and even Windows Defender uh, was small enough to catch this one. Oh, right, because if you have extensions and hidden folders off, this is what it would look like. Oh, uh, threats found. Uh, threat, uh, Kapolvum... Let's just see where that actually spawned from. Okay, is the capcut.exe. It looks like that's already running. Oh, oh. Pretty sure that was the virus that did that one, because I, I didn't do that. It's just the service was stopped. Yeah, and we get this uh, broken-looking uh, thing. And we can see what else it's doing. The system is now completely pwned. The idea is that this could uh, look like a video. And this is, in fact, a real uh, capcut file. Whereas the second part of this is not real. Why can't I see it? I have the... Okay, it was just a refresh issue. That makes sense. I might as well... Oh, we can try our old friend at my chain proxy. I'll see. Now, so far, we don't see anything uh, suspicious network-wise. Let's just try a little reboot of this system. And here we go. Let's try running it again. There's definitely no requests coming. Let's try and do a bit of a deeper dive into what's in this file. Yeah, there's nothing uh, nothing useful that can be extracted. Okay, so we did a bit of investigating and discovered uh, quite a bit of stuff in here. I used detected easy's extract function, and we find an exe and a dll uh, that are both quite big. So from size comparing it looks like this one probably comes oh uh, that usually means there's a few packers none of which were very clever because a clever packer does not just contain the whole exe unmodified but there's some sort of a packing scheme so let's just run these through virus turtle to see uh, if we get closer to our goal we can open up these sub files so the top level appears to be some sort of rust application which of course is essentially impossible to statically analyze but if we dig a bit deeper, uh, we find a C++ application that probably is packed, but it might at least give us some indication of what's going on here. And we can see there's still another binary within this one uh, from the fact that this program cannot run in MS-DOS mode. So let's take a look at the DLL. There's also here a zip file 
uh, the DLL is over 90%, and then most of that is in this zip file. Now, what's in this zip file is the next question. Now, unfortunately, this is written in uh, Rust, but then we can at least get an idea of what, uh, what uh, packages are installed. If we go to depths, uh, we will now get a bunch of medications. We've got, we don't actually have a ton of stuff in here. And from the fact that the main thing in here is actually a Python file inside of a zip, uh, we can be pretty confident this is actually still packed again. Go here, we can see a header. Wrong one, I guess. Just waiting for that to unzip. But we can see the key here. So we got this Python, where we've got a python.exe, pi. We got a Python runtime, a launcher, get. Let's see what Eddie caption is. Doesn't look like it's a thing. Uh, and that is a Wireshark icon, which is another, because this probably isn't a Wireshark binary, and it's another red flag when you see, no, it actually is a Wireshark binary. So we got Wireshark under a false name. Get. Launcher.exe, which is probably just running a pun. Now here is the main interesting, so we got this, uh, Let's see if that's... Let's go to the main and see if this is ever called. At least not in a non-obfuscated, but this is the only real juicy uh, function here. Calcio polyseriv. Not getting much from static analysis, but I've sort of got a plan now. And here's where the payload actually gets dumped. Now I'm kind of embarrassed. I spent so much uh, time uh, without catching... That. Now, for some reason, that ends up with a different sized binary than what we saw when we dumped it through DEI. DIE, I mean. <laughs> uh, so let's see if Iris Total has anything to say about this binary. So, this I'm assuming is probably the binary within here, and that gets loaded. The reason I miss this in static analysis is embarrassing. I checked load library A, but I didn't check load library W. And of course, on Rust, uh, that's probably the one that gets used. And this does, it's got one detection, doesn't have a ton of them. This is the function that actually loads the malware. So I'm actually going to get rid of the other two uh, breakpoints and just stick to the mal entry one, because that's the only one that matters. No uh, Bing or let's try Google as well results for this uh, questionable DLL, which if this was in fact a library, uh, would probably not be the case. You also end up with this uh, Filmora which is tagged as git for windows, which also is worth upload. Okay, it is just git for windows being renamed. Uh, weird they choose the name of another editing program. Now let's try debugging this su suspicious deal out. And we've got the bzip again. I have a feeling this is going to use this, but I could be wrong. So for whatever reason, our initial sample actually didn't execute a part of its command. And I also figured out what that... A mysterious uh, image was, uh, in fact, uh, embedded in this file is a Calibra ebook. Uh, they put a public domain ebook to pad the file size. So here is the actual payload. I found this by just kind of trolling around the binary. Oh, uh, and of course we get bad Marshall data, unknown type code. Oh, why do we get some? It appears that works, but of course doesn't get anything useful out yet uh, because it's just martial data. So now we're just going through the process of manually creating a disassembler for this. Now we can print the type of the object just to be sure we're on the right track. And just because this can be a bit confusing, remember you always have to use when you want to, whenever you're dealing with martialed code, you always have to use the same version of Python. Now, this Python seems to be throwing an error, but as long as we can get the version that this Python is, uh, we should be fine. Well, this is actually not Python at all, which is weirder. Okay, this is Python, but it seems to be a non-interactive version. Python 3.10.11, uh, this version of Python. I should also point out, given the bytecode here is relatively small, our expectation is that whatever's in here is a fairly small dropper. The Python we just installed. Now we can do dlpy. And there we go. So we import base64 requests. Okay, requests is really the main thing I'm after. 
uh, create connection web socket. Oh, and then we get another uh, blob of base64. So ultimately, after feeding the deobfuscated code into Google Gemini, uh, the, or not the code, uh, the disassembly, uh, I was able to decrypt the real uh, payload, uh, which is this. So what are we actually doing? Subprocess, uh, const, uh, random, rand in. So we wait a random amount of time. That's one of the anti-sandboxing techniques. Uh, then we go to Cwin system Filmora, and the we still the Filmora process. If I recall right, we can double check. I don't think that was. I'm pretty sure that Filmora process didn't contain any malware, but maybe I'm misremembering now. Well, this is Git for Windows. Let's just double check that's real. There is actually a way around this in theory, and that would be DLL injection. Okay, let's just quickly run these through. No, bingo. So lib win p. Okay, okay. I gotta give credit where credit is due. This is impressive because think about how much time this would have taken, especially like before AI, where you could just easily deobfuscate the scripts. So ultimately, winpthread-1.dll is the actual malware. Well, that's definitely quite something. So that's going to be all for this video. Uh, one of the deeper rabbit holes I've gone down, uh, we had several stages in several different languages. And ultimately, uh, if I wasn't as familiar with Python as I am, I probably wouldn't have been able to get all of it. So thank you so much for watching. Be on the lookout. Remember that an image is never an exe. Never, ever. Uh, if you, you can actually, if you're on Windows, you can go do this right now. This show hidden files and uncheck this so that you see file extensions. That's all for me for now. Bye.